So you can actually see that you can aggressively rip the uh, paper right off, and this pre-etched coating helps the toner stick. You want to be careful. You don't want to go too aggressive, but you can actually see that once you get down to that coating, the uh, pre-etch really helps it to stay on. I've seen people that have ripped traces right off like this, and you can still do it. But uh, if you go carefully and design your board correctly, then it actually goes pretty quickly, pretty easily. A good little tip is, once I have a good section exposed, is if you notice in areas like here and here, those aren't right angles. Those are actually 45 and 45. And you'll actually notice with uh, time, those 45 degree angles help ease the uh, strain on the trace, or rather the uh, toner, and prevent them from being ripped off during this process. It's actually pretty aggressive. People take their time and uh, use all sorts of gentle babying methods, whereas I skip straight to the business. And just keep working on this. Uh, areas that don't have any um, toner on them will start to flake away. And you'll actually see that some areas will have this white coating. That's not paper. That's actually the gloss coating. It will chip away with a little bit of effort. So if I do this just right, it will chip away. And that's not toner. The toner is just below that. And what you can also do is help this process along. You want to get all the uh, gloss coating away from these uh, areas that are to be etched. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with the etchant actually getting down to that. Paper seems to peel away, but this gloss coating that the Staples paper has uh, is pretty resilient to the uh, etch. Perhaps it's something to do with the chemistry between ferric chloride or cupric chloride, however, I really haven't noticed. You can also use paper towel with a pair of plastic tweezers and rub the uh, gloss coating off during the etch. However, if you just agitate it, it won't come off by itself. But All you really need to do is clear up some of these sections that aren't supposed to have copper in them. This is actually a current sensor board that uses SMD parts. And uh, it's hybrid with through-hole parts, so you see a little bit of both. And there's still some paper here, so I'll get rid of that. And if you find that you really have trouble removing the paper, you can uh, put a little bit of water on it. It's nice to keep a little squeeze bottle of water handy. So, put a tiny drop on there, get it on that paper, and rub it right away. Once you don't have the paper, it actually dries pretty quickly. So, this board is almost completely prepped. And the key part's just getting the uh, areas that are to be etched clear from this gloss coating. That paper is just a carrier for all the other stuff. So just make sure all the areas can be accessed by the etchant and everything should be good. Now that you've completed uh, removing the paper from your circuit board, you can take your warm to hot etchant, not boiling, and just practicing safe precautions with the uh, hot plate, turn it down when you're not using it, just pour some of that etchant into your plastic tray. You can use glass, I prefer plastic. Another thing to keep in mind is that because this etchant is hot, it's going to give off acid fumes. Keep any uh, metal objects such as pliers, tools, or 
components away from it. This is an example of, um, well, you can't really see it, but I'll put a photo into the description um, of a really corroded chisel that I accidentally had lying around here. So just be very careful. And if you have sensitive lungs, you can uh, add some ventilation or do this outdoors. However, uh, the fumes aren't terribly harmful if you have uh, a weak acid mixture in there. However, when you initially make your etchant, it will be pretty strong and you don't want to breathe any of it. So at this point, we're ready to put the board in. Just clip it in your uh, tweezers and carefully place it in. Set the tweezers aside. And once your uh, board is in the etchant, what you want to do is just add a tiny amount of hydrogen peroxide. 30% is very strong, so you maybe want even half a milliliter and just place it far away from the board. You don't want to place this directly onto the copper board, otherwise it's going to uh, corrode the copper away even through the toner mask. And you don't want to add too much hydrogen peroxide either, otherwise you may produce chlorine gas. So then you can just start rocking the mixture back and forth and it will uh, start to eat away at the copper. What you want to do is make sure the etchant stays warm and keep rocking it back and forth. What you can also do is take a section of paper towel, just tear it off of one that's pretty clean, fold it up and place it uh, in the grip of a pair of tweezers or something. Just make sure that all your tools that will handle this directly are either glass or plastic or are very corrosion resistant. Stainless steel will not be good enough. Any metal will be uh, a bad idea. And what you can do is just rub the board gently if you notice that areas aren't etching properly. And you'll also notice that uh, the etchant will start to darken if the hydrogen peroxide concentration starts to drop. And if it becomes really saturated, then you can uh, dilute it with a bit of water. However, it's really not necessary. What you want to make sure is that all the gloss material and the paper has been removed. Most of it will be removed by the earlier step, but you just want to make sure here that the etchant can really get in there and do its job. Now at this point the board has been sitting in there for a while and this is actually a pretty carefully set up shot. You can start to see the um, removed copper wash away with each agitation. When you're agitating this you want to make sure you can see that any spots that are uh, potentially suspect, like the insides of vias, through holes, or in between fine traces, you want to make sure that you can uh, etch that. So you can just take this and gently rub away. I'm actually not going to do it because it moves the board out of view of the camera gently rub it away and you can continue gently rocking the circuit board also note that uh, your tweezers will still get covered in etchant have a safe place to put those down once your circuit board is completely done etching what you can do is just carefully fish it out using your plastic tweezers and you can grip it on toner at this point because uh, there's not enough time for any damage to the toner mask to allow etchant in um, and whatever etchant does get in there isn't going to have time to eat away at the copper so what you can do is just take it and quickly put it into some water once that's done just let it sit for a minute then you can take it out dry it with a paper towel and at that stage you can begin either drilling holes or removing your solder mask. Uh, also another good thing to do at this point is to take your etchant and store it if you're not going to be doing any more boards in the foreseeable future. This is the safety measure and also helps keep uh, tools nearby from corroding. However, this board is done and it's good right down to the psoic level. I uh, can't, actually can't get the camera to focus on it, but you can see the text and you can see the SOIC uh, chip outline pretty well. So this board is done.